But the bottom line is I don't want to, to make people's lives better by giving them somebody else's money. I want to give them the opportunity to go out and earn the money and provide for themselves and their families. That's Rick Santorum's tongue-tied moment on New Year's Day. Back with me now. Man who has some strong views on politics. Phil Donahue, what do you make of the Rick Santorum surge? And one of many. He's, um... I saw him commenting on the Straits of Hormuz. He's got both guns out. Mm -hmm. He's already angry. You can see it. They better not block her. And you can hear the drums in the background. And the heartbeat accelerates. He wants to... He wants to go after Iran. I mean, how many wars do you want to have in your lifetime? How many bombs are you going to drop? Um, I just think it looks like we've become a warrior nation. We bombed Grenada. Grenada. We are dropping bombs on crowded cities at night where old people and children are sleeping. And we're watching it on CNN. And the only voice that's spoken up at all in this campaign about this is Ron Paul. Mm -hmm. Why are we so interventionist, he wants to know. What are we doing with all these wars? How are we safer? These are very common sense observations and no other candidate can possibly speak those words. It would be, they believe, politically fatal. Now think about that. You can't, you can't use an anti-war platform to get elected. So Maybe that explains why it's so easy for us to go to war. Norman Solomon has written a book which is uh, War Made Easy. And he, essentially, he says, if a president of the United States wants a war, he can have one. Mm. And I believe that totally. It's very, very hard to dissent. Think about what's against the person who wants to say, wait a minute, wait a minute. Are you sure? These are... Newt Gingrich said Ron Paul's positions are dangerous. So it's fear. We have to be tough. And we're killing our young adult children because of this. What I've noticed about Americans and America when it comes to this kind of thing is that anybody that dares speak up against a war instantly gets labeled, bracketed, a pacifist, <laughs> a coward, weak. And it's not really like that in many other countries. It's, it's the kind of thing that mystifies me because you don't have to be a pacifist to disagree with, say, the Iraq war. Yes. At all. I mean, it's not, a, it's not pacifism. It's pacifism if you say no war is ever acceptable. If you say Winston Churchill had no right, Neville Chamberlain had no right to have a war with Adolf Hitler, then that is pacifism to me at its weakest. It, it is a weak position. Of course you have to right. stand up to a dictator like that. But when it comes to issues like Iraq, incredibly important that the world's number one military power, number one political power, number one economic power, has a proper debate about whether they should go into these things without people being labelled a pacifist if they don't think it's a good idea. You know, that's just one of the pushbacks. And by the way, I'm not brave enough to be a pacifist. I, I am, like millions of other Americans, very, very concerned about our foreign policy behavior over the past several years. And the way that our, the bedrock of this nation has been chipped away by the people who, democracy, democracy, and they're turning their back on the Bill of Rights. We have people in cages with no habeas, no phone calls, no Red Cross. In Guantanamo, you mean? Uh, yeah. Um, you know, this is not the country that my parents raised me to pledge my allegiance to. You know, you can't say you're a proud American and then waterboard somebody. You can't say you're a proud American and assassinate an American citizen in another country. Those are mutually exclusive ideas. See, Ron Paul, I, mean, I, I interviewed him yesterday. It's interesting you, you say this because his big thing, and I think it's an impressive thing to say, is he supports the Constitution. 
Yeah, I'm telling and you. And for that, people call him crazy. And I'm yeah. watching this from the sidelines. I don't have a horse in the race. I'm Isn't British. That amazing? And I'm like, here's a guy who basically repeatedly says, I support the Constitution. And he's the one everyone calls cranky. Mm hmm. Yes, everything is turned upside down here. Uh, so Ron Paul's concern about our adventurism is, in Newt Gingrich's words, word, dangerous. Uh, you know, peace is dangerous. That's, and and the, the people who call for it are marginalized. Um, we don't get it, we don't understand. Uh, liberals are always scolding. They're n I've had more than one person say, if a, liberal, if a liberal complains about something, they will respond by saying, that's the trouble with you liberals, you don't like anything about America. So if you criticize America, it means you don't like anything. That's how they just push back. Plain devil's advocate though, Phil. I mean, isn't it also true that the right wing, the Republicans who espouse traditional so social conservatism, they also get the same kind of caricaturing, don't they, by the left? I mean, it, it does work both ways. Yes, it does. I agree.